Joseph Garcia. Oh my goodness. Thank you. By Joseph Garcia. Oh my goodness. I have, um, I'm honored to be here among a few Schnauzer owners. Holy <laughs> cow, I didn't think there were these many Schnauzer owners in the United States. Um, and today, the demonstration I'm going to give to you or give with you, share with you, is going to be uh, interactive. Okay? You tell me what you want to see. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll see if you can do it, right? But I'm going to let you know a little bit of um, a background of what we do, why we do what we do, and uh, kind of the history. First of all, how many of you guys have ever heard of the giant schnauzers involved in law enforcement, period? Narcotics, bomb detection, they're great dogs, right? And more and more, um, how, many, how many of you guys have heard of them in special operations? Okay. I don't know any that are in special operations currently right now, other than outside of our unit. So in, um, I'm gonna kind of give you a little history, okay, of what these giant schnauzers do, why we call these the high performance giant schnauzers, particularly that guy right there. His name is Ami, or known as Amitz, okay? A-M-I-T-Z. Um, he is our current alpha dog. He's got over 18 interdiction, um, interdiction, or you guys would call them bites, right? Um, we specialize in responding to high risk uh, correction emergencies or, or mitigation operations. Hostage situations, major riots in over 3,000 jails in the United States, international to include Israel, Europe, as far east as Singapore, Saipan, Guam. And our dogs, our units, uh, they deploy us to either stand teams up, train teams, or to respond to real world operations. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody, uh, if you follow us on, um, how many of you guys follow us on social media? Okay, only a few of you. If you don't, good, you're not missing too much, okay? Um, the giant schnauzers are a very unique breed, right? I think they're unique, and some, there's a lot of questions that we get. And one of the questions is, why did you guys choose the giant schnauzers for law enforcement special operations, right? That's a big question, because everybody always goes, name me a dog, a police dog by breed that you know right now. What, what, what's the number one dog comes to your mind? Mally um, Shepherds, right? How many of you guys hear the word schnauzer? <laughs> Rare! <clears throat> Unless it's in your area and you have a good handler that's willing to take that. So back in 2009, we had a major incident that we were involved in. And uh, over a thousand inmates were rioting. There was several hundred of us and then they called in our team. When our team goes in, the, most, the biggest our team is, is we're gonna probably respond with about between 12 and 18 individuals and, or team members. And we could be involved in an inmate riot with almost 400 inmates to 12 of us or 18 of us, okay? But we go in highly, um, highly equipped with a lot of specialized munitions. And the way our unit works is we go one operator, one canine. So 12 of us, guess how many buddies we have? Yeah. 12, 12 black dogs, giant schnauzers. That's all we use, exclusively giant schnauzers. Do you know why we use giant schnauzers? Take a guess, yes sir. Bite force, okay, anybody else? Intelligence, what else? Intimidating looking, right? So, here's why we use them, primarily, okay? I'm gonna give you some facts about it. And if anybody says, if anybody hears something that comes out of my mouth, feel free to say, ah, i call you out. <laughs> see? You see what I'm talking about? And that's the number one thing. The intelligence levels of the giant schnauzers. We love their, their, their smartness. I'm not saying if there's any Mallies in here, any Shepherd people in here, they're great dogs. They're the Swiss Army knife of law enforcement and the military. You know why? They're, they're small pot and eight. Hey, no discrimination here on, uh, on Mallies or Shreps, okay? So they're the Swiss Army knife. They're a great dog, and you can do a lot with them. How many of you guys have seen the uh, Mallies or the Chefs, out of curiosity? What's the one trait, everybody in here, if you, if you think of a Mallie, what's the first adjective you think about or a verb you think about when you see these dogs? They're what? Did you say neurotic? Did you say like really aggressive? Did you say like um, they're high energy? Yes or no? Yes. Right? Yeah, they are. Because that's why they're great dogs. So 
on the giant schnauzers, intelligence one. Number two is adaptability for environment. In other words, because we work inside of a prison, right, we can go to one housing unit and there's a stabbing that's just taking place and an officer might be on the ground and we take this dog and, and we'll go into that, temper, um, that, that environment and then in another housing unit we'll go into, we'll respond to the housing unit, there's a melee going on, inmates stabbing each other, okay? And then we have to go and transport another inmate and it goes bang, 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 depending on where we're at. And I need a dog that can, that, that can do a high level of temperament. So, <clears throat> temperament's another one. Somebody said bite force. <coughs> Pardon me. It's not COVID or anything, it's just allergies right now, so please don't start freaking out of me, okay? <clears throat> I don't know if I have to maintain a minimum distance here. I maintain a minimum schnauzer distance. I'm on, I'm on top of you. Yeah. So, for us, with our, with our, our canines, bite force. <coughs> bite force is, when you see a Mali or a chef, any veterinarians in here? Come on, there's gotta be one. No docs, any vet techs? Vet techs, raise your hands. Come on, one, two. Okay, so if you look at a Mallory or Shep, what does their, their, their bite normally look like? A V-shape, right? Open your dog's mouth on, on a giant schnauzer, what do you see? More of a C-clamp, okay, it's more of a C-clamp. <coughs> the bite pressure on a giant schnauzer comes to the back. That's why we want them to press down and get a good deep bite. So, how many PSI do you think your Mallies and your Sheps hit? Anybody, anybody want to take a guess? 235, right? So some people have said, hey, um, you talk about 370, 400 PSI. How do you know that? Because, now I'm gonna give you a little history lesson of what happens with our unit of giant schnauzers. Do you realize that the dog you have is part of a line that is really setting the precedence? This, these guys are setting a precedence and we're changing history. We're changing the way we train dogs. How many of you guys have heard him bark so far today? Not one time. 98% bark free. 99% bark free. And you're gonna see why underneath the high level of stress. Because in a prison environment, you see all these dogs that are barking today? Did anybody go to that meet and greet at the restaurant yesterday? Oh man, I wish I could've gone in there. But I walked in there and my teeth were like, I was like, all the dogs were having a conversation, adults were having a conversation, and it's like bouncing all over the wall. Now imagine amplifying that inside of a prison. How does an inmate hear you? Can't, can't give orders. My dog gets neurotic and he starts going off. So that's why we tell our dog. And, and I came up with this thing, in silence, there is power. Because my dog doesn't have to bark to let you know he's gonna bite you. Yeah. My dog doesn't have to bark to let you know how smart he is. I just need to be quiet. So I want our dogs to do what? Be seen and not heard. Think about it. Why does my dog need to bark? He'll bark right when I tell him to bark. Fools in. Fools Any veterinarians in here? Come on, there's gotta be one. No docs, any vet techs? Vet techs, raise your hands. Come on, one, two. Okay, so if you look at a Mallory or Shep, what does their, their, their bite normally look like? A V-shape, right? Open your dog's mouth on, on a giant schnauzer, what do you see? More of a C-clamp, okay, it's more of a C-clamp. <coughs> the bite pressure on a giant schnauzer comes to the back. That's why we want them to press down and get a good deep bite. So, how many PSI do you think your Mallies and your Sheps hit? Anybody, anybody want to take a guess? 235, right? So some people have said, hey, um, you talk about 370, 400 PSI. How do you know that? Because, now I'm gonna give you a little history lesson of what happens with our unit of giant schnauzers. Do you realize that the dog you have is part of a line 
that is really setting the precedence. This, these guys are setting a precedence and we're changing history. We're changing the way we train dogs. How many of you guys have heard him bark so far today? Not one time. 98% bark free. 99% bark free. And you're gonna see why underneath the high level of stress. Because in a prison environment, you see all these dogs that are barking today? Did anybody go to that meet and greet at the restaurant yesterday? Oh man, I wish I could have gone in there. But I walked in there and my teeth were like I was like, all the dogs were having a conversation. Adults were having a conversation. And it's like bouncing all over the wall. Now imagine amplifying that inside of a prison. How does an inmate hear you? Can't. Can't give orders. My dog gets neurotic and he starts going off. So that's why we tell our dog. And, and I came up with this thing. In silence, there is power. Because my dog doesn't have to bark to let you know he's going to bite you. Yeah. My dog doesn't have to bark to let you know how smart he is. I just need to be quiet. So I want our dogs to do what? Be seen and not heard. Think about it. Why does my dog need to bark? He'll bark right when I tell him to bark. Fools in. Fools in. Garcia, how do you know it's 400 PSI? How do you know it's 375 PSI? Remember when I told you about your drag styles you have? So 10 years ago, or in 2000, uh, 2000, the electronics branch for the space shuttle. So if you look at, this, at, the, at the space shuttle, you know that black nose tip? On the end of that nose tip is a, is a space shuttle's guy. So in 2012, I was the first guy to start putting lights on a giant schnauzer. Do you know how many law enforcement and, and canine people laughed at me? I was laughed out of places and conferences. <laughs> what an idiot, right? Then I explained that it allows us to track our dogs so that when, when they're going down range, okay, we don't shoot our own dogs. Today, how many canines do you see wearing lights? The schnauzers! In law enforcement, but what? The first ones to start wearing lights, right? Because sometimes you gotta be willing to break the mold. You gotta be willing to go forward. And coming into this industry in special operations with a giant schnauzer, you know what the number one complaint was? Too big. They don't train in the, in the, in the, in the time set that the Mallys and Chefs do. How many of you guys would say here that the, that the, the schnauzer is kind of mature, just a little bit slow? Do they mature a little bit slow or do they just develop at, their, at, at a different speed? Exactly, thank you, young man. Okay, they develop at a different speed, okay? And so training a schnauzer for us is so much different. So let's clarify one thing. Joseph Garcia, or known as senior, right? I'm not a trainer. I'm not a master kennel master. I'm not a super duper uh, mentor teacher of the teacher teachers. I'm just, I'm just an operator, I'm a handler. I'm the first corrections guy in the United States who runs a tier one team, which means 24 hours a day, this rig right here and other rigs like this, armored, it's got the Hendrix uh, system in it, over 670 horses, guys, in case you're wondering, uh, special airbag systems, run flat tires, it's armored from the front up, it's a 13,000 BTU AC on the back end of that. I've got a communication system that's in uh, encrypted, and then we have uh, a drawers and stuff like that that are stacked with some incredible things. And it was primarily designed around our dog. Let me show you why. Because in this kennel here, I hold two canines. The first dog comes in, goes all the way to the back and the door closes behind him. And then a second dog comes in. And then that way we can transport two dogs at any given time inside this truck. We always carry two operators, two canines, and all our equipment to respond to anything up to a hostage situation or rapid response. That was designed by a schnauzer man for a schnauzer. And now a number of agencies throughout the world are starting to do what? Mimic that. And it was the schnauzers, right? That we designed it for. You guys should be proud, right? So today, this is us talking. Schnauzer people, the schnauzer people. 
I'm a, an operator hand here, which means I lead my team in as a team leader. That's why they call me senior, okay? But I'm the only team leader in the United States right now that actually goes in with a canine. I lead with a canine. When I'm not working, because my dog is my partner, he stays to my side. He'll go my left, my right, the center, what have you. So today, let's talk to each other, right? Give me a question. Ask me something about my dog or that, that you're interested in. Question, come on, I got it. Does he live yes. with you? One at a time. What's the home life like? What's the home life like? I don't know. Honey, what's the home life like? <laughs> Pretty good, right? What do we mean by that? That means that the way we work our dogs right now, you have to understand. How many of you guys have ever been inside a prison, a maximum security prison, a prison or jail? Okay, a number of you. If you work in it, you're a corrections officer, thank you very much. Law enforcement, thank you very much for serving this country through law enforcement or corrections. But a corrections environment, it's a very volatile environment. It's one of the most violent environments, one of the most violent environments in the world here in the U.S. prison system. Do you know how many officers are attacked every night, every every uh, the time frame for, for for corrections officers? How many corrections officers are attacked? Ninety seconds. Every ninety seconds, a corrections officer stabbed, killed, injured, and or killed in the United States. Every ninety seconds. Do you know how many inmates there are in the United States? Two point four million. Do you know how many correctional facilities there are in the United States? Over 3,000. What do those numbers tell you when you talk about corrections officers under 500,000 corrections officers? They're outnumbered. And with today's day and age, the way things are going right now, it's getting even worse. Okay? Why am I, I, why am I in that environment? Well, it's, a, it's an environment that the Lord brought me to. And so, um, their home life for our dogs they're going in and out of prisons all the time. We like to rotate what we call, when a dog goes active, the dog might go active for two weeks straight. I've been on the road as much as eight, 12 weeks at a time, straight. And then I come back for what we call a quick turn. So I'll have bags ready, then we're, I'm off to the next country, or I'm off to the next state, or I'm off to the next deployment, right? And so our dogs, what we like to do is two weeks on, or three weeks on, and then a week off. I'll bring in another dog in. So we only exclusively use giant schnauzers. We love your temperament, and I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by temperament. And when I say temperament, what I'm gonna show you is something that is highly, that's been highly classified, and we have not shown it. And I challenge any of you, anybody here, to tell me that what we're doing to our dog is cruel. And I have a question for you guys. How many of you guys have played sports here before? Football, baseball, soccer, um, played sports, okay? Contact sports, right? How many of you guys have done any solo sports? Ice skating, uh, what are some other sports? Uh, wrestling, uh, any of those solo sports? How, karate, okay, self-defense. Um, how hard is it? How much time do you have to put into it? A lot, right? So we do the same thing for our dogs when we prepare them for the environment. It is a very difficult environment. Imagine, do me a favor real quick. On the count of three, Everybody yell, schnauzer fest, ready? One, really loud, please, because I'm gonna show you something. Really loud. One, two, three, when I say three, schnauzer fest. One, two, three, schnauzer fest! Now, exactly. now, now listen to yourself, right? Imagine all of you yelling at the same time, and all of you are in a housing unit, and that dog comes in. I don't need that dog to come in and be afraid, I need him to be mentally strong, and that's why we like the schnauzers. You ever notice a stubborn, a stubborn schnauzer? No. Anybody, everybody um, experienced no. one of those? What did I just tell you? <laughs> Ten seconds ago. They're very stubborn, right? It's because they're, they're, they're strong in the mind. How many times you ever spank a schnauzer? I just told you. <laughs> Come on. We know what happens when that door closes, and those schnauzers get underneath your skin sometimes. It's like, you go to your bed, go to your room, go to your crate. These guys, they know it too. So I hope I answered your question about their home life. They eat well, we do a 50-50, kibble and raw. We do the kibble for stability, and we do the raw when we're, when, when, whenever we can, except when we travel. When we travel, we really watch what we go to for their meats. Very important, okay? Next question. Yes, ma'am. I am a handler. Oh my gosh, they're training. Okay, here we go, you ready? <laughs> training. Da, 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 da. 
I'm his what? Master. I'm his buddy. He's my partner. So what, I, what happens is our dogs, when they come to us, they come to us at eight weeks old. That lady right there goes to Europe to an exclusive place that I can't disclose where they go to. And she'll help with the, with the testing. And then the dogs come here and then they go to the Risenator farms. So the dog comes for us for eight weeks and they go to what we call in dock. Ears, tail, right? And, and then they stay there for four weeks like four weeks, and then we ship them off to a location. We use like nine different locations throughout the United States. For, he goes through narcotics, EOD. He goes through air assault operations, helicopters. We've learned how to rappel down. Uh, helicopters when we insert. So if you watch some of our videos, you see our dogs, they come off and that helicopter's still moving and the dogs come off. Okay, it's not easy to do, trust me. All those rotary blades on 200, 150 mile an hour winds coming straight down. It's not easy for a dog. They go to low light school where they spend six weeks in nothing but darkness constantly. Their training begins at nighttime and it ends right before the sun comes up. They do a lot of training where the buildings are shut down and that's where they do all their training. And everything was very low light for them. We sent them to cadaver school. Cadaver school. Why do you send a dog to cadaver school, Garcia? Because I need him to learn one thing and one thing only. You know what that is with cadaver dogs? What makes the cadaver dogs cadaver dogs? They're very gentle when they find it, and if they have to pull down the, the sleeve, sleeve or they pull out the pants, okay? So that's what we need that dog to do. So when I have an inmate and he's up, okay, hands against the wall, my dog will go up. If in case, um, I suspect that the inmate has a weapon, my dog will go up and pull his pants down around so I can see his waist. The guy will turn around, dog comes down, dog just pulls it down at the waist. Very gentle. We send our dog to sheep herding school. Yes. He goes three weeks to sheep herding school. Do you know why? Because in the event that we arrive on scene and I'm dealing with the dog, my dog is going to make sure I'm protected. So he keeps all the inmates away from me while we provide first aid. So that equipment that we have there, we're, we're utilizing it so we can save the officer's life or the inmate's life. And my dog's protecting me and all of my assets. So I'll give you a little demonstration, right? Where I'll say protect, and he'll, he'll protect something, he'll move around. It's almost like a ring sports school, but we need to, we need to send him to sheep herding school. And then they go into tracking, and then they do a couple of other things that um, we can't disclose here. But he works on hostage rescue, so you're going to see that he works on this little bad boy. He's very special. And this is what we're known for. Some of them. Let's touch it. So when I mark up an area, in a riot, my dog needs to know where to go to. How does he know where to go to? I give him a general direction, and then I target. That's exactly where he needs to go to. And that's how we move our dogs when we deploy our dogs. The schnauzers were the first to do it. I came up and worked with a, a very specialized team when I found out they were using lasers to guide their EOD dogs. I said, hey, that makes a lot of sense. Imagine using a riot. He said, I wish I could help you. I just told you that we use lasers, but if that was me, I would kind of start training in this way. So in 2011, I was like, hmm, I'll try that. And guess what? We became the masters of it. We were the first to deploy these dogs with lights to give them a general direction and lasers. So my dog knows where to go to, where I need to send them to. And we'll give you a little demonstration now, just so you know. When our dog sees that laser, there's nothing that you can do to distract them. He knows exactly what's at the end of that, and, and he's going to punch it. Does that make sense? Wow. So when, when the inmate sees it, right, or the inmate see it, they never see this because the dog's down here. Okay? Are you guys learning something right now? Now, for personal protection detail, all right, on some of our dogs, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but we train some of the owners how to use their lasers if we need the dog to search certain areas. If we hear a noise, my, well, our client, her client, will stand under the porch, take the laser out, put the light, and then direct a dog to go to check out that tree or check out by that car and the dogs are gonna go. You'd be surprised what the schnauzers have done, the groundbreaking things that our schnauzers have done. Are you guys learning something today? Yeah. Huh? Yeah.
Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked me earlier over here, I'm gonna get right over here. Why do we cut our ears and our tails? So in 2010, 2011, um, what they have, the, the schnauzers, you know, our schnauzers, we don't have a show cut. They have very short crop and we have a specification. And we do that where when, our dog, when we send our dogs in, okay, we use a very specialized helmet. Aww. It's a helmet. It has communications on the inside for the ears. And it protects his nogger. Shatter resistant on the eyes for him. So he, can, he has his nose. Inmates have had a tendency of grabbing the ears on the long ones and stabbing the dog in the head with a pencil or pen or what have you. The tail is that there have been a number of shepherds that have gone in and the tails get caught in the door and inmates are, are chopping them off or their bunk buddy grabs the tail and breaks the dog's tail off. It's a very violent world that we work in. And so we've learned through experience what happens, okay? And so that's why we cut our dog's ears and his tails for his safety. And then, if you've noticed, I challenge you guys to look for the schnauzers pre-2010. How many schnauzers did you see giant schnauzers with that kind of haircut? Almost everybody you see have the giant schnauzer cut, coat, and the, and the hair's long. So we use a, what we call a, a, a seven reverse on them so that when our dogs have any kind of trauma, we can see the blood immediately. It's for their safety. So after the operation, we run a blue light on our dog very quickly because blue light brings up what? Blood. blood, very quickly. And you'd be surprised. It's very violent. It makes you use a number of different things. Question, damn, you had a question over there, sir? Yes, sir. Beautiful dog, by the way. It's a schnauzer? I would have never guessed. <laughs> Oh, how long will they stay? Yeah, so what happens is uh, they stay with us until they're five years old and then we put them asleep. You know, they go to sleep and like, not, what did you guys think I was talking about? I'm kidding, man, relax. Um, our, our, our longest dog we had serving with us was uh, nine years old operationally. We used the 80% rule. 80% of their life, meaning that once they start slowing down, we see they're starting to slow down, we pull them offline. And then we use them as an alpha dog and train the other dogs. <clears throat> but their life from that point on is amazing. Spoiled. Um, all these guys have their specialized tempermedic beds. <coughs> their kennel doors on their crates, their crates are always left open. We very rarely ever close those doors because it's our safe place for them. <coughs> if something happens to me, my dog knows to come to my aid immediately. Meaning that he carries a first aid kit on him. So I, if, if I'm conscious, I can reach up and get a, um, what we call a, something to stop the bleed for us. We can get a tourniquet if I need to. Other than that, he'll go into an alert system, which means he starts barking, and he basically stays on top of me. My partner comes and gives him a code word. And that, that, that releases my dog, so my dog can go with somebody else. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, mega. Some left. Some left. Good girl. What language you like to speak there? Venga. Venga aquí ahora. Spanish. Black. German. So our dogs know five languages. German, Czech, Spanish, French, and Hebrew. Do you know why? Because we're partnered up with what? two or three other operators. If we're all yelling German, or we're all yelling Czech, what do you think that dog's gonna do? Right? right? That's exactly what happens. So I calibrate my dog, and I usually like to speak Hebrew or Spanish with him, okay? And the others are gonna speak German or Czech because they're lazy and they don't want to use any language. I'm cool with that, too, okay? Questions? Top rows. Yes, ma'am, sure, ma'am. Remember what I told you about temperament? How are they with children, right? Um, I can tell you, but I'd rather show you. Okay, Kelly, here we go. 
Would you like to see how they're good with children? How about with you? ready and what I'd like if it's possible I know you don't know me well but I'd like maybe five volunteers if, if you if, if maybe you're a trainer if you're a trainer um, come on down if, if you're a trainer yes ma'am okay it's fine but well, just five volunteers six volunteers I'm fine now uh, yes come on down yep want to come on Where's your mom? Where's your mom at? Mom? Okay. You want to come down here with them? Mom? Dad? Like? Okay. Awesome. Stay right here. What's your name, buddy? What's your name? What's it? Russell? Thanks for watching, Russell. You like this ball? What's your name? What's that? Hi, Alex. Nice to meet you. And you are? George. 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 Dracula. George of the Jungle. Nice to meet you, George. Nice to meet you. And who are you? Will? What's up, Will? Norvana. You ever hear Norvana? Norvana? Or Kurt Cobain? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was kidding. Okay. So, here's what we got. I'm going to have all you guys stand over here. Right over here. Start with your right there. Yep, stand over here. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Or... I got Mari for a second. Just for a second. It, this is not gonna hurt, I promise. Too bad. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're over there and you kind of want to see this, I'm gonna have these guys kind of get together a little, 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 little. But I can promise you this. Some love. Some love. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be very intense. And the reason why this is going to be intense is because I need you to see the temperament of this dog and why we use these dogs. But I'm going to do a modified red line. I'm not going to get super high with it, but I'm going to get into a, to a red line, okay? And if you hear him bark one time, that's okay. Because all dogs and all human beings have a limitation. But I'm going to push every button I can right now, within reason, for him. I'm going to get him very amped up. And then you're going to see me bring him back down very quickly. And then I'm going to have people just pet him. We'll get on his belly, you can pet him. And then boom, back up very quickly. I'll redline him. Okay? So the way I use water, the way I use different things, is to 
get him and try to push different buttons. I don't know if he's going to go offline or not, okay? So I have a question for you now, right now, as, as a general public. Why do you think we do this? Practice. What's that? Practice. Why do you think we run this exercise? Hey, Control? We have officers who work inside of environments. We have, I'm going to show you something right now real quick. Okay, so I, um, I'm going to have you guys come around me real quick. Come on. You guys, no, like, plot. Come on around me. Yep. Plot. Like. So we're going to walk around him just for a second. Like, excuse me, man. You can step, you can step over him. You can pat him on the head. Hey, nice doggy. Okay, what's that? Oh, it says do not pet. Oh, don't worry. There you go. How's that? Now they do not pet off. Okay? So, see. What's hot black? So, let's go walk around him. Hey, how you doing, man? No. Nope. Come on. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. Don't, don't put your face in his face. Just pet him. I mean, here. Say hi. Have you guys stand to the side? Have you guys stand right over there? Okay, buddy. What? Sit. Like. is because I need you to see the temperament of this dog and why we use these dogs. But I'm gonna do a modified red line. I'm not gonna get super high with it, but I'm gonna get into a, to a red line, okay? 
And if you hear him bark one time, that's okay. Because all dogs and all human beings have a limitation. But I'm going to push every button I can right now, within reason for him. I'm going to get him very amped up. And then you're going to see me bring him back down very quickly. And then I'm going to have people just pet him. He'll get on his belly, you can pet him. And then boom, back up very quickly. I'll redline him. Okay? So the way I use water, the way I use different things is to get him and try to push different buttons. Oh no, if he's going to go offline or not. Okay? So I have a question for you now, right now. Is there a percentage that don't make it through the program? They fail to... Yes, we have dogs that will not make it through our program. And what happens is we repurpose them to... Um, they'll go either special operations or they'll go PSK, personal protection catering. And dogs that don't make it for whatever reason, okay? And that's one thing that you have to understand. Just because you see people are selling dogs as protection dogs, they might be great on obedience and great on equipment, okay? But when it comes to real time, real world, they might not react, and that's a big liability. So we, we know that in the very beginning somewhere, and if and we like, um, we'll have a dog, we'll adopt them out, okay? But we have a waiting list, <clears throat> and there are certain requirements for those dogs. When you get one of our dogs, obedience, extreme obedience, off lead, <clears throat> they're very, very well, you're getting a $60,000 dog for pennies on the dollar, but we have to have that family put have skin in the game as well. We don't just adopt a dog just because you want a dog. That's great. We need to know that you appreciate a partner for life. His shoes. His shoes, yes. So Michelin, <laughs> Michelin has a, has a rubber company, and um, Michelin helped design shoes 2011 for what well, we needed a requirement for ice because inside this is sealed concrete. And so when inmates throw shampoo and things on the ground, um, you have different types of rubber, but we need as much surface when you're when talking about slippery, slick surfaces so my dogs can have traction. Now, have you ever seen videos where dogs are on the mall floor or the concrete floor and they're doing this? Do you know how many shoulders get tore up? And the handlers think it's, it's cute, but it's not. Okay, so 2011, we've been running specialized rubber for our dog. One of those political questions. Do you only use males? No. We have uh, Esther, if anybody's been following us, we have Esther, who's, our, who's the first female to come through the Special Operations Program. She is a, a dog that comes from Spain, and the only reason why we decided to run a female for the first time, and I'll tell you straight out, <clears throat> female and male dogs, certain time of life, seasons, have a way of making the Risenator procedure a place that we run, so that we send the, 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 the we sent her away to do her training off site for four weeks or five weeks, and then she'll come back to the boys. But it still drives the boys crazy. So we're running Esther for the first time, and the only reason why we selected her was from our testing for our dogs. She blew all the scales away from most dogs that we've seen in years. Wow! And she's an amazing dog. Right now, she's top of her class uh, in bite. And one of the tests that we run with our dogs, um, have, how many of you guys have ever heard a shotgun go off? Uh, a number of you. Or have, you've heard a handgun go off. Imagine in this environment, if I fired a shotgun, that's going to be very loud. At eight weeks old, they come to us and we fire a shotgun right above their head. And if they run and scatter, okay, we can't use them. We need to know that they're very strong. So we have certain techniques and tests that we run that under these very controlled environments. And so the dogs go through a, a process, environmentals. In other words, when our dogs are first born, two weeks into it, there's music that they hear, chaotic music. Okay, um, 
during the daytime, and then they're eating their food, and we have certain tests that we run in Europe for them. At nighttime, all they hear is classical music. During daytime, we hear nothing but crash, metal, everything like that, and we, we, we help develop their environmentals. And then we start weeding the dogs out at that point, for which ones last. And the dogs that don't last that environment, we take them away, and they, and they, go, they go to civilian roles, and they, you know, they go to a nice, nice relaxing environment. Yeah, our dogs are all intact. We keep them intact, and I know there's a lot of, there's different, there's different things about, they, they say, causes cancer when they get too old. It makes them aggressive. So can I say something? Because again, I'm not a trainer, right? I'm just an operator handler. I'm a handler. So how many, um, how many men do we have in this room? Out of curiosity, raise your hand if you're a man. This, this, is, not a, this is not a trick question. Can you tell me at what age the, uh, that part of the anatomy falls off? What? <laughs> Besides getting married? I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I'm just a firm believer that we've never had to have to, have to do that to our dog ever. And it's all about the controls, all about how they're grazed. And um, I get some people say, hey, you should cut it off at two years old or three years old. Okay, if you have to, fine. They're too aggressive. I don't believe that. We run a very aggressive dogs. Do you think this dog is aggressive? He's aggressive when I turn that switch on. All these schnauzers here have switches. They all have switches, right? You ring that doorbell, what happens to that dog? <laughs> okay, exactly, right? So they all have switches, but do you know how to control it? No. no. All of you have switches, tempers. We all have tempers, but have we learned how to control it? Of course. So in, on our unit, in our training process that we designed for them, we designed it so that we control that aggression, control the aggression. And we have a lot of playtime with them, lots of playtime. Questions? Do they ever go to your house? All the time. Lives with me. Um, okay. Four schnauzers live with me on the unit. All our dogs live with all, all the handlers. They're, they're an integrated part of the family. When they retire from us, you know what they go into? They get classified underneath personal security canines at that point. This is the best security canine you can ever imagine. If you guys ever get the opportunity to adopt one of our dogs, you are walking into a gold mine. Enjoy that dog for the rest of your life because he's going to protect you with everything they have. They've got the, the average training for these dogs are almost three years long. Three years at a cost, at an average cost of ten to twelve thousand a month. <gasps> ten to twelve thousand a month just for training. They see a vet every six weeks. They see a vet every six weeks. They get everything from chiropractor adjustments to nutrition. We got a nutrition coach. They get blood work done. Anytime our dog leaves one training site, we're automatically seeing a vet. We're automatically checking all the blood work. We cannot afford for any of our dogs to do what go down on the pipeline. Nope. Go down. Period. Okay, so that's why I tell people whenever we walk our dogs, you see us. We don't pull out. We don't pull off on rest areas because a lot of people don't know how to um, keep a dog uh, quarantined if a dog is sick, whooping cough, or has some kind of uh, issue. So that's why we stay away from a lot. We don't. We do not allow our dogs to go to dog parks. We find an open field where a dog hasn't gone, and then we kind of have that time with that dog there. He commands. He's a horse for me, but that's just one of those things, the schnauzer thing. Yeah, marking lights. And then the, we see little strobes. Uh, the strobes basically tell you the, the direction of the dog's head. So if you see the red, the, the red line, okay, and then you see the little beep, that little, that little blink tells you the direction of his head. We don't sell these to just the general public, but only at, at our shows we do. So if you're interested in these marking lights, they're the best lights. Put them on top of your dog here. So that when you're walking your dog, when you're walking your dog, people don't step on their feet. People see the visualization. You want people to see your dog, not how cute they are, and they step on them. So if you watch any of my videos, like I went to a mall in Christmas time with a nine month old and I was walk, walk, walking in and out. Um, usually I'll put lights on the, on the dogs, right? But I want people to see the dog. I want them to know, hey, Everyone's looking here, looking up, but they never see it down. And a lot of these dogs get hurt. So, if you're interested, those are the, these are the K1, K9 lights. Great. Question. He does tracking. So if there's an inmate that escapes, um, it depends on, 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 the, on where they're at, how we've tracked him. If, if he's running to this building here, we'll go ahead and send a dog, make the announcement, and the dog will start searching. And the dog, depending on, uh, will react based on, he has cameras. 
So if you see some of the technology that we have on here, we have cameras that we put on the dog so I can see where he's at. And if the inmate decides to fight, he decides to fight. If the inmate stands there, he's gonna let me know. But usually I have the camera, and if I don't, then I'll give him the command. It's okay to, to do what we call free, so he can bark if he needs to. We are the Garcias, and it's been a pleasure to serve you. Thank you so much. It's our honor to have been here for you. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Everyone say Schnauzer Fest 2023. Or, yeah, Schnauzer Fest 2023. One, two, three. Schnauzer Fest 2023. God bless you guys.